before we jump into coding with um, vectors and with matrices in Maya, I just want to quick and do a quick overview of how we're going to do this. Now, you can always do in Maya, right? If you've got, say, we've got a transform, you can do command start get atter. You know, we can just get the attribute of locator one dot t. So yeah, let's just save that t equals that. So now we have that, and as we talked about, this is basically a vector that we have now. The issue that we have here, first off, it's <laughs> returning a tuple inside a list, so we just have to do that, so that now we actually just have like a a single vector. The issue right now is that. Because this is all pure um, Python lists or a tuple, we can't really do any vector operations on it. We can't say t times t and get a new vector or t times 2 um, and get a new vector out of that. Basically, if we do that on this, it's just going to be doing list operations, right? So you can see here, it's basically just taking this tuple and added it in once again. So it's not really scaling a vector because it's inherently not a vector. It's a list. So if we were to do this, it would be, we'd basically have to do all of those calculations that I laid out in the overview as well, right? We'd have to go in and be like, you know, the, the zero index, oh, sorry, the zero index, you know, times two, and we'd have to add that back into the vector, right? And that's just very cumbersome. We'd have to do the same thing for the matrix class as well. Um, sorry, for the matrix math, because of if we're getting the matrices here, we will be returned a list of 16 floats. So, you know, we don't want to go through and really like write out all these operations. That would be very, very time consuming. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Python API. And specifically, we're going to be using the Python, the 2.0 Python API. And we can get that by doing Python Maya dot API dot open Maya as OM. Um, Specifically, I think if you're if you're using this a lot, it might be better to use OM2. I will be using OM just for simplicity, um, because I will definitely forget to add in the OM2. The original Python API would be op import Maya dot open Maya. So it's basically this um, API added here path that um, separates the two. Now. We're not going to be using the old API. It still has a lot of the same kind of characteristics, but it's a lot less easy to work with in Python when you're kind of dealing with all the float values and everything. So for our purposes, using the 2.0 uh, API is going to be a lot easier because what we can do then is we can just do things like, let's say our tvec equals, and we'll do om2 dot M vector, and don't worry, we'll go over all these different classes that you'll need and what they'll do later on. Uh, and we can just say T. So if we do that, we have that. And if we now do this, we can now see that we have a Maya.API.OpenMaya M vector that basically is of this. The cool thing now is that we can say TVEC plus TVEC and they'll actually do that vector operation on it for us. And that will just save us so much time instead of going in and plussing all the individual components and doing all that math for us. Now, how do you know how, what the API can actually do? Well, there's a handy documentation. So if you go help, Autodesk Maya help, you should get up the, your kind of the standard Maya for you'll be getting the standard documentation for your version of Maya. So in here, basically what you want to do is you want to go down to technical documentation. No, sorry, Maya developer. And if you look underneath here, you can see Maya Python API. Now, if you click on this, it will 
basically go through and talk a bit about the different APIs. So if we look at um, Python API 2, you can see here a bit of like why it's been made. It's not as comprehensive as the original Python API, but it's a lot easier to work with. And in some cases, it will be faster as well. So that's why we'll be using it. It's just a lot easier to deal with uh, for the our use cases. And the really fun thing about this, if you are not aware, is that this is basically how you could make a, a Python plugin. So if you start to get to grasp with this, you will have started making like the start of your journey towards understanding how to write Python plugins. So I think that's a really cool part as well. And I think it's really good to get a bit of exposure to this. Now, there's nothing really here to help us much because what we're really looking for is at the very bottom here, you can see we have the Python API 2.0 reference. Now, if you click on this, we'll get in here. And this is basically the full overview of how you can use the Python API. And this is going to be really, really helpful. Now, you can click in on these different ones here and it'll show you the different modules that you have with the API and the, the different kind of like classes that you can find underneath here. And, you know, there's a lot of things in here and it can be a bit intimidating. But what I would just recommend to start out with is just go to the search and just type in for now, right? We're dealing with vector. So if you just type in vector, nothing's going to come up. And that's basically because of all of the classes that you deal with in Maya, it usually has an M before it. So when we're dealing with vectors, it's M vector. So if we add in that M, you can now see that we get up these two uh, results here, M vector and M vector array. So if we just go in here, cool, we're going to get a lot of these things. I would just, just ignore this. The really important uh, bits that we're looking for kind of starts a bit more here on the detailed instruction because what it will talk to you about is it will talk to you about how you can construct it basically how you can make it so you can see for like the m vector we we can just call m vector to create a uh, the default constructor right returns a new m vector object initialized to the zero vector so basically zero 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 or we can do an m vector uh, and we can either pass it in an M vector, M float vector, M point, M float point, and then we'll basically copy those values into a new M vector. Or we can basically do it as a sequence of two or three floats. So you can basically pass in, you know, um, a list of numbers. And that's basically how we'll be dealing with it most of the time. That's pretty much what we did here, right? We just had this array of numbers that we didn't pass in here. Now, you can also then set them specifically and we'll, we'll look into that. But continuing down here, you can see this whole number support uh, section here. This basically tells you the operators that you can use on this class. So you can see for what I did, right? I did, um, m vector plus m vector returns a new vector, which is the sum of two vectors. So you can see here what operations you can actually use on that class. And this is exactly the same with the matrix class when we're going to be looking at that as well. And you can see here, you can even use an m vector and multiply it by a matrix. So there'll be a new vector resulting from post multiplying the vector, or you can just flip it around and there'll be pre multiplying it. So this is really, really useful. And in addition, if you keep going down here a bit, so if we, uh, what well you can see, if you kind of skip past most of these underscores, uh, they're not going to be super exciting right now, but all of these here is basically functions that will be really, really useful for you, right? We can, for instance, getting the length of a vector. So if we click on this, it's going to show us basically what it will return, right? It will return a float because as we talked about, like the length of a vector is just a float value. So that's pretty much as expected. 
So this is where you can basically go in and, you know, if you're trying to figure out something, if you can do it with a class, this will be the documentation for you to figure out these things. So you can see here where it's like all of this stuff is kind of what it's doing under the hood for like dividing, you know, figuring out if it's equal, but we don't have to worry about all these. I just ignore all these with like underscores for now and really just focus on, you know, number support, look at the constructors and also the, um, the kind of functions, the public member functions that are without the underscores in it. Cool. We will be going through all of these and kind of what they do in the next video. I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to where you can find this documentation and look at it on your own. And just to be very clear, uh, we'll be using the M matrix as well later on. So you will just do that. And you can see we have exactly the same thing here. We got a bunch of uh, functions. It tells us how to construct it and it shows us the number function and we'll also be looking at the M transformation matrix. And thankfully, it's really nice that you don't have to write all of it. It will show you a list of like anything that matches that. So if we go in on that, you know, exactly the same thing. This has a lot more functions to it. It will, it has a lot less ways of being constructed. Um, but you can see that we, uh, we basically have a lot of that. And, and note here as well that while it doesn't say that it has any number support, um, it actually uses the same kind of numbers for as the um, as a normal matrix. But we'll get back into that later on.